Have you ever heard of the discard phase of narcissistic abuse? It's a term that might sound foreign to some but for others, it's a cruel and painful reality. Narcissistic abuse is a form of emotional and psychological harm inflicted by someone who displays narcissistic tendencies. These individuals often have an inflated sense of their own importance, a deep need for attention and admiration, and a lack of empathy for others. But behind this mask of extreme confidence lies a fragile self-esteem, vulnerable to the slightest criticism. Now, let's talk about the discard phase. This is the final stage in a cycle of manipulation and control that a narcissist exerts over their victim. It's the point at which the narcissist abruptly ends the relationship, leaving the victim feeling confused, hurt, and abandoned. Imagine, if you will, being the object of intense affection and attention, but then, without warning, being discarded as if you were nothing. It's as if you've been dropped from a great height, with no safety net to catch you. That's what the discard phase feels like. But why would a narcissist suddenly end the relationship? Well, there could be several reasons. Perhaps the victim has become boring or predictable, or they've started to see through the narcissist's facade, or maybe the victim has begun to assert their own needs and boundaries causing the narcissist to lose control. Or it could be that the narcissist has found a new source of narcissistic supply, someone else to manipulate and control. The discard phase is a harsh reality, and understanding it is the first step towards healing. It's a complex and multifaceted issue, but by breaking it down, we can start to see the patterns and behaviors that define it. Now that we've laid the groundwork, let's delve deeper into the reasons behind this abrupt end. Why would someone abruptly end a relationship, leaving the other person feeling confused and hurt? It's a question many ask in the wake of the discard phase of narcissistic abuse. The answers often lie in the narcissist's need for control and stimulation. Perhaps the victim has become too predictable, no longer providing the thrill the narcissist craves. Or maybe the victim has begun to assert their own needs and boundaries, threatening the narcissist's dominance. It's also possible the victim's rose-colored glasses have slipped, revealing the narcissist's true, manipulative nature. But the most common trigger? The narcissist has found a new source of narcissistic supply, someone else to shower with false affection while feeding off their admiration and validation. This new source promises a fresh cycle of manipulation and control, and the narcissist is all too eager to begin. The reasons are many but the signs are often clear and identifiable. Opening. How can you tell if you're about to be discarded? There are several telltale signs that you may be on the brink of the discard phase. One of the most common signs is a shift in the narcissist's behavior. They may become increasingly critical and demeaning, picking apart everything you do or say. Their words, once full of flattery, now seem to be full of contempt. Additionally, the narcissist may start to become more distant and withdrawn. Instead of lavishing attention on you, they now seem distracted, uninterested, or even cold. They might start making plans for the future that don't include you, signaling that they're preparing to move on. In some cases the narcissist becomes physically or emotionally abusive, using fear and intimidation to maintain control. This is a clear sign that the discard phase is imminent. Closing. Recognizing these signs is crucial, but understanding their impact is even more important. What happens to the victim when they're abruptly discarded? This is the question that haunts many who've been through the discard phase of narcissistic abuse. The aftermath can be a whirlpool of emotional and mental turmoil. Depression and anxiety often take hold as the victim grapples with the abrupt end of the relationship. The unexpected severing of ties can trigger post-traumatic stress disorder, a debilitating condition that can linger long after the narcissist is gone. The victim's self-esteem may plummet, having been eroded by the narcissist's manipulation and control. They might struggle with a loss of trust in others, making it difficult to form new relationships. The world can feel like an unsafe place where anyone could potentially be another narcissist waiting to pounce. The effects are devastating but remember, there is always a way to cope and heal. So, how can you cope with the discard phase of narcissistic abuse? This is a question that many victims grapple with. The discard phase can be a brutal and lonely experience, but there are steps you can take to weather this storm and come out stronger on the other side. First and foremost, focus on your own well-being. This might seem simple but it is often the hardest step. You've likely spent a considerable amount of time catering to the needs of the narcissist, often at the expense of your own health and happiness. Now is the time to turn the focus back onto you. Engage in activities that bring you joy, 
be it exercise, spending time with loved ones, or pursuing hobbies. These activities not only distract you from the pain, but also help in rebuilding your self-esteem. Setting healthy boundaries is another critical step. The narcissist may attempt to re-enter your life in various ways, promising change or blaming you for their actions. It's essential to remember that you are not responsible for their behavior. By setting firm boundaries, you can protect yourself from their manipulation and control. Seeking professional help can also be incredibly beneficial. Therapists or counselors who specialize in narcissistic abuse can provide invaluable support. They can help you understand the dynamics of what you've experienced, validate your feelings, and equip you with effective coping mechanisms. Educating yourself about narcissistic abuse is equally important. The more you understand about this form of abuse, the better prepared you'll be to recognize and deal with it. Knowledge is power, and in this case, it can be a powerful tool for healing. Lastly, remember that you are not alone. It may feel like it at times, but there are countless others who have walked this path before you, and there are resources and communities available to support you. Remember, you are not alone, and you are not to blame. You are a survivor, and you are strong. The journey may be tough, but with resilience and support, you can reclaim your life and move forward with newfound strength and self-awareness.